Welcome back to the Astro Park, everyone. My name is Kwesi Akwa, and this video will be another continuation of the series that I'm calling My Telescope Family, where I talk about the different types of telescopes that I personally own and use for astronomy and astrophotography. So today's video is going to be all about my last and largest telescope. This is the Celestron Edge HD 9.25. So let's get it up on the mount and I'll talk about all of its features. The Celestron Edge HD 9.25 is a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. The Cassegrain is a catadioptric or compound telescope, which means that it uses both a combination of lenses and mirrors to bring your subject into focus. So how that works is first the light from your subject hits the lens at the front, which is called a corrector plate. It passes through and then hits the primary mirror at the back of the telescope. The light is then reflected to the secondary mirror at the front. Then the light gets reflected again all the way through this tube down to a focal point at the end. And that light is picked up either by your camera sensor or your eyepiece. So the light path is actually folded several times, giving the telescope a long focal length and a small package, which gives it some added portability. So as its namesake suggests, the Celestron Edge HD 9.25 has a nine and a quarter inch aperture, which is 235 millimeters, and a focal length of 2,350 millimeters, giving the telescope a focal ratio of F10. So one of the things that I love about the Edge HD series of telescopes is its versatility as you can use the telescope in one of three different configurations. The first of which being its default configuration with the native focal ratio of F10. And in this configuration, at least in my opinion, this telescope is a planetary killer as it provides breathtaking views and images of the solar system objects. I recently put an eyepiece on this to look at the moon and it felt like I was in orbit around the moon, which was very spectacular. And as you may have seen with my recent videos on Jupiter and Saturn, this telescope is capable of taking excellent photos of the planets as well. Now with the focal ratio at F10, believe it or not, you can actually do some deep space astrophotography as well. Now you need to keep in mind that with its long focal length at 2,350 millimeters, you'll be working with a very narrow field of view. So those large deep space objects such as the Orion Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy, and the North America Nebula, you won't be able to fit those in that narrow field of view. However, if you're interested in the core features of those large objects, such as the core of the Andromeda Galaxy, the trapezium section of the Orion Nebula, and segments of the Cygnus wall within the North American Nebula, you should be able to do that with this telescope at F10. However, if you're trying to fit deep space objects in that small field of view, you're only going to be limited to the smaller deep space objects. So things such as tiny distant galaxies, globular star clusters, and planetary nebulae should all come out nicely at F10 in this scope. However, you do need to keep in mind when it comes to deep space astrophotography, 
F10 is considered to be on the slow side. So you need to make sure that you take a long enough exposure to gather as much light as possible for your subject. Now, if you're trying to work on those medium deep space objects, you're going to have to use the telescope in its second configuration, which uses a device known as a focal reducer. So it basically reduces the focal length of the telescope, allowing you to shoot a little bit wider and a little bit faster. So Celestron created some focal reducers for the Edge HD series, and I have a 0.7 times focal reducer designed specifically for the Edge HD 9.25. And it reduces the focal length from 2,350 millimeters at f10 to 1,645 millimeters at f7. So I can shoot a little bit wider and a little bit faster to get those smaller to a little bit medium size deep space objects. Now, if you're trying to go for the large deep space objects, you can use the telescope in its third configuration. And this involves a third party device known as Hyperstar, created by Starzona. So how that works is first you have to detach the secondary mirror from the front place the Hyperstar unit in its place, and then attach the camera at the end. So your camera will be in the front as opposed to the back traditionally. And in that configuration, you'll be working with a focal length of 470 millimeters at a blazing fast focal ratio at F2. So you'll be able to capture those large deep space objects in a short amount of time. So it basically turns the telescope into a nine and a quarter inch Rasa telescope for comparison. So there's two features included in the Edge HD telescopes that I personally love and I hope will become the standard for Schmidt Cassegrain's moving forward or Cassegrain telescopes in that nature. One of them is this mirror locking mechanism. So with the Cassegrain design, when you're trying to achieve focus, you're actually moving the primary mirror forward and backward on the inside of the telescope on a rail. And as you track your object across the night sky, the mirror has the potential to kind of wobble around on the inside. And this phenomenon is known as image shift or mirror flop. So Celestron added these mirror locking mechanisms in the back. So once you achieve your critical focus, you can then lock the mirror down so that when it's tracking your object across the sky, it will hold the mirror in place without any image shift. And the second thing they added was a ventilation system in the back as well to help with the cooling process. It's very important to make sure that your telescope is cooled down to the ambient temperature so that you can get the best views and the best images possible. So if it's 65 degrees outside, it should be 65 degrees on the inside of the telescope as well. So what Celestron added was this ventilation system behind the primary mirror. And it allows any warm air that's trapped on the inside of the tube to come out on the outside behind the mirror. And it also has a micro mesh system that blocks out any dust from coming to the inside, which is very nice. So if you're a person that can only afford one telescope, and you wanted to do pretty much everything, then I would recommend getting the Edge HD series of telescopes by Celestron. As you can use the telescope in three different configurations to cover all of your bases in terms of deep space and solar system observing and astrophotography. The Edge HD series comes in eight inch, nine and a quarter inch, 
11 inch and 14 inch apertures. So you can choose the one that best fits your lifestyle as well as meets your observing and astrophotography needs. Here's a few sample images that I've taken so far using the Edge HD 9.25. So that was my overview for the Celestron Edge HD 9.25. I had an absolute blast using this telescope during the summer for solar system astrophotography. And I look forward to seeing what it's capable of doing on the deep space targets as well. So unless I get a new telescope later in the future, this has been my telescope family. And just like a normal family, they each have their own individual talents and strengths. They cover each other's weaknesses and they've all made daddy very proud. So thank you for watching Astro Park. And as always, until next time, take care and I wish you all clear skies.